Hey guys, welcome to Paint Fine Online. My name is Brogan and I'm just going to run you guys through your kit today to do acrylic painting. So what you'll have, first of all, you'll see your global acrylic paint. Now we've got five different colours and that's going to mix us a range of different colours to use for our paintings. The next thing you're going to have are two brushes. We've got a bigger one, which will be for most of our canvas, and then a smaller one for the detail. Next, we've got a nice canvas board. Now, depending on the painting that you're going to be doing, you'll either want to have it horizontal or vertical. And then you've also got your paint palette where you'll be putting all your paint. Now, when you're putting it in, you want to put your paint into separate ones and then use the spare ones to do the mixing. Now, what you will need to grab is a paper towel. This is just going to be for cleaning your brushes and drying it. And then also a cup to fill with water so you can clean your paintbrush. Now the last thing is also a pencil. Now you'll see in your kit that you don't have a rubber. That's just because it's rough guidelines, don't worry too much. We just want to remember to make them nice and light. But other than that, I'm going to hand you over to your artist Julia so she can take you step by step on how to complete your painting. Hi, welcome to Paint Vine Online. Uh, my name is Julia and I'm going to be walking you through this version of one of our most popular paintings, Piha Sunset. Alright, so we're going to get straight into it. To start off with Piha Sunset, we want to start with a horizon line. So I'm going to put that all the way across my canvas, just at about one third of the way up. After that, we're going to put in another line just below that. At a, going off to a slight angle. So you can see that's a little higher there on the left than it is on the right. Once we've done that, all that's left to do is draw in our lion rock. Now you can make this as small or as large as you'd like. I'm going to try and aim for mine to be not too big. There we go. Just sitting on top of the horizon line like that. Now we're going to do the reflection of our lion rock. So I'm going to flip this canvas up so I can see it in the vertical and I find that's a little easier for me to do the reflection. There we go. So you want something that's basically similar, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. We're going to sit that underneath the second line there. There we go. You can see that my line is pretty imperfect and that's okay. Once we've done that, we'll flip it back up the way it was and we're going to draw just the sun that's sitting over here in the gap just above the horizon line. Once again, you can make that as large or as small as you'd like. Just try not to push too hard with the pencil lines. There we go. And our sketch is done. Not much to that one. I'm just going to put my, put my pencil down. So today we're going to be using uh, acrylic paint. And we have, we're going to have one of each of the colours that you have there. You have black, cool yellow, cool blue white and a cool red. You'll also want your two paint brushes, some handy towels for cleaning up and just for um, wiping the brush as we go along, and a glass of, of water. It doesn't have to be full, but you'll probably want a glass that you don't mind getting some paint on. Okay, so let's uh, settle in and have some fun time painting. So I'm going to start off by wetting my brush. Okay, so because it's acrylic paint, it means it's water-based. So if you do happen to get any on your clothes, just wash it out straight away, it will come out. Um, so I'm gonna wet my brush, and we're gonna start with the blue paint at the top. So having a wet brush just means that the paint will be a little easier to use, and it will flow onto your um, canvas, onto your canvas surface, just a bit better. So grab a whole bunch of blue, and we're gonna go all the way along the top of our canvas. So there's quite a lot of blending involved with this painting. You can always take your own approach to the um, brush strokes. You don't have to have it as quite as blended as what I'm going to aim for. But if you want to follow along um, exactly as I'm doing it, then feel free to do that as well. There's always room for everyone to put their personal creative spin on whatever they're doing. We really encourage that. Okay, so I'm just adding a big section of blue right at the top. All the way along. Nice horizontal brush strokes, like so. 
So once I've got about three centimetres of blue there, I'm going to just wash a, wash a little bit of it off my brush. It doesn't have to be perfect. So just so there's not quite as much on there. And I'm going to start in with white. So what we are trying to achieve is a transition from blue through to white, through to yellow, through to red. So I'm going for the blue to white transition here. So I'm getting white and I'm starting off just overlapping that where I got up to with the blue. So right at the edge of the blue paint, I'm starting in with the white. I'm just going to wet my brush again. So we're going all the way along. Now the trick to blending the paint, once you've got a fair amount onto your, onto your canvas, is to go back and forth up into the paint that's already there. Okay, so I'm going back and forth in these horizontal sweeping strokes and I'm going to be moving my paintbrush up and down the canvas as I go. So if we don't overlap the paint that we already have there, it won't blend together, it'll just sit next to each other, which is um, not what we're going for. So I'm going to get some more white now that um, I can see that my, my white's getting subsumed by the blue. So more white there. So I'm just going to keep doing the same thing. Add it on to the, to the edge where you got up to and then bring it back up into the paint that's already there. So at this stage, you can see that I've already got a bit of a transition going on there. But because the blue obviously has a lot more pigment in it than the white, I'm going to need to keep uh, washing the blue off my brush just so that um, I can get down to a pretty close to a white. Here we go. So I'm going to keep adding more white right at the edge of where I got up to. Back and forth strokes all the way along and I'm going to bring it, still bringing it back up into the blue. Grab some more white. Oh, so you can see what happened there. I didn't um, clean my brush and I had a lot of blue on it. That's right, not the end of the world. So I'm just going to clean that off my brush. That's why it's good to just take the extra few seconds to clean that brush and, you know, might as well do it, do it properly. There we go. So if that does happen, you can always, as I say, clean off the brush and go back in with white. And you continue blending just like that. There we go. So at this stage I don't I don't have to keep going all the way up into the blue once I'm happy with the way that it's blended, which I am. I've got some horizontal lines going through there, but I actually quite like that effect. So I'm happy to leave it. There we go. So you can see that I've, my gradient has gone all the way from quite a deep blue at the top all the way through to a very light blue and then to a white. So I'm going to wash my brush off again. And you may at some point want to um, change your water out if it's turned blue that's just a bit too much blue for your liking. You can definitely do that. Um, I'm happy with that, I think it's okay. So I'm going to use it as it is. Alright, now I'm going to start from the bottom of my horizon. I'm going to move up to meet the white and I'm going to start with a yellow. So I'm going to start right from the bottom of the horizon just down here and we're going to be doing essentially the reverse of what we just did. So instead of blending downwards from a bright color we're going to blend upwards. Actually, I don't know why I'm going around the sun. Let's go right over top of it. Chances are you'll still be able to see your sun. Let's just move that out of the way. And you want to do both sides of your rock. Just like so. You can go right over the rock if you want. The rock's going to be black and we're going to put that in a little later. And the black paint really will go over anything. So if you want to go straight over the rock, then feel free to do so. Okay, so once I've got a big section of yellow, just like that, I'm just going to wash a little bit of it off my brush. Dry that off, dry the excess off. You don't really want your brush to be dripping onto your 
onto your picture makes it a little difficult. I'm going to grab some white paint and we're going to start blending the yellow into the white just like what we did before with the blue. Just like that. So I'm bringing that white down into the yellow until I feel like it's not really having much effect and it's really kind of run out and then I'll get some more. So all the way along. So you'll, you'll don't have to wash your brush every time I do. Um, so it'll be kind of a bit more of a judgment call when you want to wash your brush. Now I'm going to try and make these two colours meet in the middle. So I'm grabbing some white and I'm just going over the section of canvas that's still, it's still clear on mine. Okay, always back down into the yellow. Grab some more paint. And then bring it up to meet the blue as well. So if your colours are light enough, they won't blend uh, together too much and to, to make a green. So we're not aiming for a green sky. Nothing wrong with a green sky. There we go, just a little bit more back and forth to make sure it's nice and smooth. Okay, so now we have a sky that transitions from blue through to uh, something close to white and then through to yellow. So you can see on your um, on the example of this picture um, that the bottom of our horizon is actually red. So I'm going to use some red right above the horizon line directly over top of my yellow in order to achieve that. I'm just putting a big stripe all the way along and then I'm going to wash it off, wash it off my brush. Because the red is darker than the yellow, I'm going to use the yellow to blend it in, otherwise it will just overwhelm. It will just all turn, turn into red, which is not really what I'm looking for. So I've got yellow on my brush and I'm just going back and forth over this red. Just until I find, until I see it looking the way that I want it to look. And when, it's, when it really does feel like I've got too much red on my brush, wash it off. Wash it off again. This time I'm going to go in just with a clean brush because there's already a lot of wet paint on my picture and adding more at this stage probably won't help very much. It's just a lot of back and forth, patient back and forth and not forgetting the other side as well. So we're getting pretty close there, pretty close to a nice smooth gradient that I'm looking for. Grab a little bit more yellow. If you feel like you lose some of the yellow then you can always bring it back by adding a bit more. There we go. Now I'm pretty happy with that. Feel like it's nice consistent sky, nice smooth gradient. I'm gonna wash off my brush like so. Okay so our next step that we're going to do is the reflection of the sun. So I'm gonna wait for a little bit before I put my sun back just while my paint dries for a bit. So I'm gonna put the reflection, I think I've lost my sun yeah. It's basically lost, but it's going to be about there. So I'm going to start just underneath that, get my yellow paint. And I'm going to, I'm moving the brush in horizontal strokes all the way from the horizon, back and forth, using it corner first. And I just sort of lift it off at the edge to get these, um, these kind of pointy edges. So it ends up with a bit of a zigzag shape. And down onto the section that's really just wet sand. 
big, powerful sunset. Go all the way up to the horizon and down to the bottom of the page. And we'll wash our brush off. Okay, now we're going to skip this middle section. So this, this middle section that is a big sort of black stripe through the picture, that's the ocean. We're going to move down to this section here which is that wet sand when um, the tide's coming in or out, you get um, all that wet sand that you can still walk on. So that's the section we're gonna do now. Now I'm gonna start off with, not red, but I'm going to make an orange. So scoop up some yellow, add it into my red there. like so, give me a bit of water and I'm going to add this orange onto the outside of that reflection that I just did. So very similar sideways brush strokes just on either side so the yellow moves into an orange and then we're going to move into a red and then a brown and black. both sides like that. So it's totally okay if a lot of your yellow will get um, overlapped. So we'll often put down a colour and then overlap over top of it so not as much of it is showing through. Very normal. Okay. Wash that off my brush. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the red. Grab the red on my brush, overlap it. There we go, just like that. I've got that brush going sideways and I just lessen the pressure off as I get towards the end of the stroke um, to get that pointed edge. You could try um, on, a, on a spare bit of paper, um, might be easier to practice beforehand just to get the hang of how to move that paintbrush in such a way that you can get those pointed edges. fiddling with it now. <laughs> Alrighty. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually keep using our red. We're going to add a bit of a glow around the edge of the sand and also around the edge of our rock. This is going to make it stand out. So we still want to see our dark rock um, reflection against the dark background as well. Now I'm, for my next colour, I'm going to mix up some brown. Now, because I don't really need um, any more of this orange, I'm going to start adding, I'm going to add a little bit of blue to it, and that's what's going to give us a brown colour. So it's certainly not the most attractive colour in the world. That's alright. You have to have the dull colours to make the bright colours shine. Too many bright colours and they get overwhelming. You can't really, um, you can't really make, make out what you're looking at or what's supposed to be beautiful about it. Okay, so I've got my brown and I'm going to add that to the rest of this section down the bottom. I'm just starting from the outside. 
all the way up to that reflection, that jagged edge that we just did. Same on the other side. You may need to um, uh, mix up a little bit more brown as you go if you don't have quite enough. That's okay. There we go, all the way up to the red. So I like to keep my brush strokes quite loose. Um, around this lower area, give it a bit of texture. It's nice to have um, uh, different textures over your, your whole picture. So we've got very smooth up here in the sky, give it a bit more texture down here uh, in the ground, in the sand. And over the other side as well. Okay, so that looks really nice. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to wash that brown off my brush. Actually, thereabouts. Sometimes it's just give it a wash, give it a wipe, and it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so the brown, the brown section down here is still quite light, so I'm just actually going to grab a bit of black, and I'm going to start in with the black. Now you want to be pretty careful with the black. It's um, the darker colours are always going to go over, they're going to overwhelm any of the lighter colours. So you just want to start with a small amount and then you can add more. It's harder to take it away. So you want to get used to how much it takes to achieve the effect that you're going for. And I'm just adding black to just the middle of the brown section really. I'm staying away from the edges, so that'll give our edges our edge around, around the outside of our uh, rock and our sunshine. It'll start to make it almost glow. Bring those sideways spiky strokes back as well. Now I'm using a really, I'm really using a light touch with this. I'm not putting hardly any pressure onto the brush. I'm just really letting the brush do the work. Um, that's how I'm keeping my brush strokes quite smooth. So the more pressure you apply to the brush, the more you'll see the stroke. So if you want to try and um, smooth them out somewhat, then keep it really, really light. So the brush is really just like skimming across the surface rather than pushing into the surface. Okay, and the other corner beside the rock as well. Okay. So sometimes I like to just wash my brush, have a little look at what I've done and see if there's anything that I'd quite like to just do a little bit of retouching. So in this case, I'm gonna get a little bit of red and just go over that edge around there, try and blend it in a little bit more. So a good rule of thumb, when you are blending is to use the lighter color. So I'm going to, if I'm trying to blend red into black, then I need to use the red to blend. If I try and use black, then it will just turn black. Your darker colors are generally going to overwhelm your lighter colors. Okay, get a little bit more black so I can add these strokes. Let's pointy strokes in here on the other side. Now I am, I am going through this quite quickly so you definitely want to um, just hit the pause button if you want to spend longer 
um, working on your painting, which is absolutely fine. To go at your own pace so that you can create a painting that you're happy with. Okay, so I'm going to spend a little bit just titivating it just a little. And I'm happy with how that looks. Okay, so I'm going to wash that black off my brush. There we go. I'm just going to check my sky, see if it's dry. Not quite, not quite. So we'll do the sun after, after the rock. Okay, now we're going to move on to the C section. So that's this middle section here. And what I like to do for this is to grab some blue and just quite roughly put these, some blue into this section. Now there's no grand plan with this. I'm just using those same horizontal strokes, but I'm leaving lots of gaps. So I'm going to go over this with black. We're not going to end up with a huge amount of blue poking through, but I do quite like just have a little bit. It's going to go all the way over to the left as well. So you want to try and just keep in mind when we're starting to work on the seed to try and keep the horizon line as flat as you can. Unless you've um, decided that yours is going to be a stormy day. Um, this, is, this is water, this is ocean, so it's going to be relatively flat. Okay. Wash most of that blue off my brush. Now we're going back in with black. And I'm going to start by just really carefully making that flat line of the horizon that I just spoke about. It doesn't by any means have to be perfect and it probably shouldn't be because it would look a bit odd. But you do want to just keep it in mind. Maybe there. Okay, so you can go all the way along the sunset if you like, or only partially like I have. And I'm just carefully just trying to fill in the texture that you can see of the canvas that comes through. I always like um, my black to be really nice and and uh, deep, dark, solid color. So sometimes that means just taking a little bit of extra time to make sure that you've really got all of it. Okay, so I'm happy with how straight that is. And now I'm going to continue using these sideways strokes. Just like that. Just trying to go around most of the blue. And I'm going to fill in the ocean. I'm starting off here on the right and I'm going to use those sideways flicks to get to just preserve the, um, the yellow of the sunset. It's uh, glinting off the water. So I'm going relatively slowly with this section um, as I say just so that I can make sure that it's nice and black and it doesn't look like I've skimmed, skimmed the surface. There we go, so all the way down to that second line, just above the red. like that. And 
and I'm going to continue on the other side with this exact same technique, exact same technique as what I've just, just been doing, but over the whole other side of it as well. So you can see that my um, my strokes over here onto the sunset are they're not particularly even, which is um, quite nice, I think. So some of them are poking more into the yellow, some less. Okay, so let's keep going with this black, these black lines and this black section of the ocean. So I'm overlapping parts of the blue. I'm really aiming for the section of um, canvas that is poking through. So I can just leave a little bit of blue just coming through the black. And you'll see that I'm going over my black sections. So I just feel like they're not quite as black as I'd like them to be. So once they've had a couple of minutes to dry, I'm just adding a bit more. Just really get that nice sort of inky, inky deep colour. Okay. Fill in the remaining gaps. Okay, I'm just gonna wash my brush off there. I'm just gonna go back over that blue, just those little blue sections, so that they blend in nicely with the black. So as I say, you won't see too much blue. Really only when you look at your picture in bright light will you see the difference between the blue and the black. Wash that off my brush. Now I'm looking at the edge of my of my black sections here and here and I'm just not super happy with how um, smooth and straight they are. So what I'm going to do now is just move my canvas around so that I can more easily get to the bits that I want to, to smooth out. And just very carefully just going over that edge. I'm not even talking, that's how much I'm concentrating. <laughs> so if you find that your, your lines are a bit wobbly and you, um, you can't quite hold your hand steady enough, just try moving the canvas around and approaching it from a different angle. So I'm going to 
flip mine around all the way around the other way now, just so I can easily get to the other side. And I can lean my wrist on my uh, sky because it's dry. Oops. There we go. It's nice and neat. Okay, so our next step is going to be to paint in the rock and also the reflection of the rock. So I'm using the same paintbrush. This is just going to be jet black. And once again, I'm going to move it so that I can access it easier. And I'm going to do the, the rock to start off with. And we're just doing the, the around the outside, okay? So we're going to going to give the outline and then we're just going to fill it on in. It's just easier to paint the outline first. There we go, all the way around. So do it nice and slowly so that you can, you can uh, really work on that black and make it nice and inky. And then once we've done that, I'm just going to fill it in. Flip it up the right way again. There we go. I'm just filling in that rock with black. Keep it nice and thick. Go. So you may even want to do two coats of black, leave this one to dry and do another one. So once we have painted the rock we're going to do the exact same thing with the reflection underneath. And once again I'm going to move that around, flip it over so that I can access the side more easily. where we can neaten up that edge of the paint by going over it slightly. All the way up to those pencil lines that you can still just see, I think. I'm just gonna bring that little lump back in here. Try and get that reflection looking Semi similar. Now it's totally okay if your um, piha rock, uh, your your lion rock goes off the bottom of the page. It might be necessary for it to go off the bottom of the page to get an accurate um, reflection. And that's absolutely fine. That won't ruin the picture at all. It's better to have a reflection that looks similar that goes off the page than have a squished one. Here we go, fill that all in with black. Okay, now I'm going to turn it up the right way again so I can see what I've done. Pretty good. So I'm happy with how that reflection looks in relation to the rock. I'm just going to add a little bit more black to my C over here. So you can always go back and add more paint to a section if you notice there's something that you really do want to fix. 
but the trick is to not to overwork it. So don't go back and add paint just in the hopes that it will somehow look better. Make sure you do have a reason for why you're doing it. Otherwise you're better to just sort of step back um, and um, appreciate it for what it is. Okay, washing all that black off. Okay. Now at this section, I'm actually going to go and change my water. So you can see that my water has gotten really, really dark. So I'm just gonna go and make sure that that's nice and clear. So I've got my clear water. And that's gonna help me with the sun and the clouds, which are the only parts that I have left to do. So I'm gonna start with the sun. Now, if you want to, you could get the pencil and just redraw that those lines back in there, but that's really up to you. I'm going to freehand it because I'm feeling bold. So I'm going to get a little bit of white and I'm going to mix it with some yellow. Just over here on the palette. So the reason I'm mixing some white in um, is to just to make the yellow a little bit more opaque. So I've got a little bit of red here in my yellow, so it's going to be a nice warm, it's kind of a banana, banana candy flavor, uh, colored paint. Love banana candy, mm, delicious. Okay, so make sure that we put our sun above the reflection over here. So pop that in, just like that. And as I say, you can make the sun as small or as large as you'd like. So your sun will probably stand out more against the red than it will against the yellow. I really personally really like that effect. And if you wanted to, um, you could leave it to dry and uh, put another coat of yellow onto it um, if you preferred. Now, I like to just add a little bit of atmospheric haze to my sun by getting the same yellow and just sort of doing those sideways, some more of those sideways strokes. Apologies if you're finding those ones difficult. This gives it a bit more of that the hazy atmosphere look, just like so, not too many. We have our sun sitting very low on the horizon. Okay, now I'm gonna wash that off my brush. Now at this stage, we have an almost finished painting, but we want to put some clouds in the sky. And I could understand if you wanted to leave your, your sky cloudless um, on a beautiful, beautiful evening, but I'm going to put some clouds in, so feel free to join me if that's what you want to do as well. Now, the key for clouds is really to keep the bottom of the cloud flat. So the way that I like to approach my clouds is to get some white on my brush. And I'm going to start off, I'll do it over here. I've got a bit of a, um, a smudge where I put my finger on it before, so I'm gonna handy just cover that up. I'm gonna add an, a sideways stroke, just the same as we have been doing before. And now I'm gonna build up the cloud, the puffiness of the cloud on top of that stroke. Okay, so I leave just sort of in the middle, so I leave those two edges poking out. And I'm just doing little, little circular motions upwards. So as you can see, that's not, my white's not really staying white. I'm just picking up a lot of the blue from underneath, which is really nice. So clouds, if you look at them, they're really, they're not usually stark white. They usually um, have a lot of different shades if you really stop and take a look at what what the cloud actually looks like, particularly if you've ever looked at clouds on in the evening. They're not white at all because the, uh, the sky behind them is much lighter than the cloud itself. So I'm adding a bit more of the white in just random sporadically, wherever I want to, just to give it a bit more texture and depth. I'm trying to make those big sort of puffy clouds that pile upwards. 
So the reason that we, uh, that we have a straight line is just to keep the clouds from looking like those clouds that little kids do, <laughs> with um, the, the kind of look like sheep. So it was, it, these are still quite stylized clouds, um, but they look a little more um, purposeful than the sheep, children's sheep clouds. There we go. So I'm keeping these larger clouds over in the blue section, as you can see. Let's do another one. It's quite a lot of fun doing this. You can build your cloud up. See how tall you can make it. You really want to make them quite uneven, a little bit misshapen. I always like to pile the clouds up a little bit more on one side than on the other side. And you can see that I'm getting in lots of different shades of blue happening. And you can vary the size of your clouds. You want some of them to be smaller and some of them to be larger. If they all look the same, then it might look a little bit um, not quite real. There we go. So I've scattered them through the sky there. Add a little wee tiny one. There we go, another wee, wee smidgy cloud there. There we go, that one's a runt. And you can really go nuts with this. You can add as many or as few clouds as you like. But as you can probably tell, I really enjoy them. So I am adding quite a lot. Sometimes just those little wispy, wispy tails make it look a bit more realistic. There we go. Okay, so once we've got a whole, base of a whole bunch of clouds, I'm going to wash that white off my brush and I'm going to give them a little bit of extra colour actually because there's so much uh, colour happening in the, um, the sunset that some of these, these clouds will also be picking up some of those, that colour as well. So I'm going to get a little bit of yellow on my brush. Not too much, gonna keep it, still going to keep it quite light. I'm going to add some yellow just to the undersides of the clouds where, where the yellow from the sun might be hitting, cutting the cloud. So essentially, whichever part of the cloud might be closest to the sunset, is going to get a little bit, just a little bit of yellow, some of that reflected light. There you go, just like that. Not too much. I don't want to overwhelm it. I'm going to keep it quite light. Now I'm going to do a whole other um, layer of clouds. Actually, these ones are relatively close to. Um, if I was the viewer, these are close to my viewpoint. And I'm going to do a bunch of clouds on this white section, on the lo lower section down here. But if I do white clouds on a white background, that's just not going to stand out. So um, I'm going to make kind of a peach color. And that is a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red, and a little bit of white. Just over here on my palette. Bit of water so I can control it. There we go. So I have a peachy off white kind of colour. I'm just going to make a layer of similar clouds, but they're going to be smaller. But same shape, same principle. Start with that straight line and then add the puffiness of the cloud on top of the line. So they can go down in the sky. And lots of really beautiful scattered clouds. Very stunning evening at Piha in our pictures.
just love the blobby shapes. Okay, nice one. Cool, now I'm gonna add a bit more of a darker peach actually to these ones. Still not standing out quite as much as I'd like them to. So I made a bit of a darker peach there on my brush. And I'm gonna give them a little bit of shadow. So if you want to, you could use your smaller brush to um, add some detail to these, or if you feel like you may be more comfortable using the smaller brush for this, it's entirely up to you. Just wash that off. And I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of light yellow just to smooth out and blend in those, those shadows just a bit more. So it's really nice to just kind of pile colour on top of, it, of, of itself and just see what, what you get, what you end up with. Yeah. A little bit of white, a little bit of highlights. One looks like a hat. <laughs> okay. You can even go back into your upper clouds and add a bit more highlights if you want. Just while that's um, while that's dried a bit now. Nice. I really like how this have turned out. Okay. So the main bulk of my painting is now done. Just wash my brush. But I think that what I'd really like to do is to add another coat of black down here, or just at least to um, use some black now and just go over the sections that I feel like the black is just not as dark as I'd like. And I can see my brush strokes kind of coming through there. So I'm just using some black now to Fill that in, make sure it's nice and dark. Yeah, that's really working. It's, it's a really worthwhile thing to do, I think. And I think I'm just going to do it just over the ocean part as well. Anywhere that's really black, I want to make sure that that is nice and dark. So on the other side there. Alrighty. Pretty happy with that one. Okay, I hope you guys are happy with your paintings as well. I'm just going to wash that brush off. Always a good habit to get into, even if you feel like you've finished painting, wash the brush off so you can reuse it again. There's nothing more heartbreaking than coming back the next day and realizing that you'd forgot and the paint is dry. Okay, so you can always sign your painting as well. Usually down the uh, bottom right hand corner is the more traditional place to sign it. And make sure you take your paintings and go and show them off to your families. Thanks for joining me.